Hello, my name is Chloe Greenbank. Uh, welcome to today's Rotherham Taylor webinar on a guide to running a limited company. We'll be answering some of the frequently asked questions by people who are just starting out in business. So our first question, how do I register my business as a limited company? So you need to do this with Companies House. Um, you will need to notify them of your registered office, of your directors, of your shareholders, um, and you will need to do that directly with Companies House. Or you could get an agent like ourselves to take care of that for you. Question two, do I need to acquire shareholders? There are a few different types of limited companies, um, one being a limited by guarantee company, which doesn't require shareholders, which will be used by an organisation such as a charity, but a private limited company um, guaranteed by shares do require shareholders. Um, they do not need to be the same people who are the directors, but the shareholders will be the people who receive the dividends um, from the company. Talking about dividends, how do I pay and account for dividends? So once um, you have worked out how much reserves you have in the company, so that is your profit, less your tax, that is then distributable to the shareholders. Um, you don't have to declare dividends every year, uh, but you can do, and anybody with um, a share will receive dividends. Um, Next point, can I use my personal bank account to set up a limited company? Uh, simply, the answer is no. Um, as a limited company, you are a completely separate legal entity um, and you do require your own bank account. Question five, do I need to acquire insurance for my limited company? Um, generally, yes, there are a few different types of insurances to consider. Uh, if you have employees, you'll need employers' liability insurance. If you are dealing with the public, you will need public liability insurance. And if you're giving out advice, um, you'll probably need professional indemnity insurance. Um, I think it would always be best to talk to um, an independent insurance broker about your specific needs for your specific company. Question six, how do I pay my staff a salary? Um, if you do have employees and you're obviously paying them, you will need to set up a pay-as-you-earn scheme with HMRC. You will then see, receive um, a reference number and you can then submit real-time information submissions to HMRC, which need to be done on or before um, every payday. So obviously you'll deduct the tax and the national insurance and pay that over to HMRC um, on your employees' behalf. Question seven, I want to provide my staff with additional benefits. How should I account for this? So if you want to provide your employees with a company car, with a mobile phone, with a gym membership, um, or any other benefit, benefit, you will need to um, record that and declare it on a P11D at the end of the tax year. Um, and there are um, implications of benefits too. So for the company, you will need to pay Class 1A national insurance on certain benefits. Um, and also the employee will have to pay tax uh, and sometimes NI on those benefits too. So. I would always say um, to check before you start giving benefits what the overall cost of providing that benefit would be um, because sometimes it's more than you think. Question eight, by law, do I have to provide my employees with a pension? Um, again, simply the question is yes. If you have uh, any employees, you will need to have a pension scheme in place. Um, they do have the option to opt out, but even if they do opt out, this pension scheme needs to be there. Question nine, I've heard that some businesses are required to report their tax affairs digitally. What does this mean? So at the moment, um, HMRC only require um, businesses who are registered for VAT um, and are over the VAT threshold of £85,000 to report their VAT returns digitally. So this would be through a software such as um, Xero or Sage or whatever bookkeeping software you are using. Um, this is going to be rolled out into other 
um, taxes um, and to other businesses um, as well. Question 10, does my business need to be VAT registered? Um, so if you're making taxable supplies um, and the value of those supplies is over £85,000, you do need to register for that. Um, it's uh, compulsory. But you can also register voluntarily for that. Uh, for example, if your um, clients are VAT registered and they don't mind if you add VAT on top of your um, usual price, then um, you can claim back the input VAT on any of your purchases. Question 11, how do I invoice customers once my business is up and running? So obviously you've done the work, you need to get paid, you need to issue an invoice. Um, especially if you've registered, there's certain things that you need to include on a sales invoice. So for example, your um, company name and address, your customer's uh, name and address, uh, your VAT registration number, if you are VAT registered, the tax point date, what services you provided, and then the split between um, tax, net and gross. Um, and also you'll obviously want to put your bank details on there so you can get paid. Question 12, how must the business record and pay corporation tax? So you'd re, so you'd pay corporation tax at the end of your accounting period. Um, corporation tax is currently at 19%. Um, that is calculated on your taxable profits, which can often be different from your um, accounting profits. Um, and that is recorded on a CT600 form um, and the tax needs to be paid nine months and one day after your accounting period. Question 13, what are my personal tax on obligations as a company director? You will need to register for um, personal tax self-assessment with HMRC once you are receiving um, untaxed income. So that might be dividends, for example. So just because you're a director doesn't mean you have to register for self-assessment. It is more for shareholders who are receiving dividends um, or any other untaxed income. Question 14, what records is the business required to keep? Now HMRC require you to keep your records for six years and your records would include your bank statements, your credit card statements, purchase invoices, sales invoices, expense claims, anything that's included within your accounts. Um, and those records can either be kept in paper form or digitally. And our last question, question 15, what are the benefits of working with an accountant when setting up a business? Well, I think the benefits are that you've got a sounding board, you can get the best advice on what would suit you best personally for your circumstances and the business's circumstances and just making sure you've got the foundations right for running your business um, and they can obviously provide you with the best advice. So I hope you found those quick um, questions useful and um, if you do have any follow-up questions then please do get in touch um, with us and um, this details are on the screen there and um, thank you for listening and hopefully see you all soon